My name is Dr. Donald Koziak. I'm an emergency medicine physician uh, based in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm also the medical director for our Avera eCare program, of which we deal with lots of stroke care. And today, we're going to talk about stroke. Well, we were um, out of town visiting some uh, relatives, and um, Tasha, my wife, was in the other room talking to my dad, Ernie, and uh, she came into the room and said, uh, <clears throat> he seems to be slurring some of his speech. I started noticing a headache, and this was late in the day, like getting close to midnight. And um, throughout the night, I had a pretty medium-sized headache. And then when I woke up, there was a, actually the headache got quite worse. Um, when I got uh, a little bit later on in the day, we were going to go out boating. And it happened that I was getting a little bit more agitated and a little bit more... I'd say, I don't know, irritable. And once we got uh, into the boat, I started skiing. And I started feeling actually a little bit upset to my stomach a little bit too, but kind of just put that off and decided to enjoy the vacation and went to skiing. But then I noticed my left hand and my left leg felt a little funny. So um, I made a signal to the boat to stop and I tried to get back into the boat but I wasn't really able to get in. I noticed that my left hand and my left leg were just too weak to pull myself into the boat on the ladder. I was out in St. Louis over the weekend, came back to Minneapolis for work, woke up on Tuesday morning, I got out of bed, felt my, like my leg was sleeping, but I just ignored it, thought it was probably because I had been traveling so much. So I proceeded to go in to the hospital to do training for them. When I left the hospital, I knew my leg still wasn't working correctly, but I just thought, again, the thing you're not supposed to do, ignore it. Went back and laid down for about an hour. My leg progressively got heavier and heavier. I drove myself to the ER. Um, so within an hour of being in the ER, I had no motor function whatsoever of my left leg. I think it was a week before it actually happened. So it wasn't even just that day. Um, what I started experience was severe pain in the back of my neck and even migraine-like symptoms. The day that it happened, still had it, but went to swing a golf club. And during that process, I started to have double vision. I was at a wedding dance or reception party at CJ Calloway's when I was introducing my wife to a gentleman that I knew. And I just felt myself going almost limp. My legs gave out from underneath me. and. I grabbed down to my wife, I said, I need to go sit down, help me go sit down. And I went over to a table and sat down. And I couldn't really tell the facial, you know, asymmetry until she said, give me a big smile. And so that's when we called 911. From what I've learned on the whole situation, the, the part of getting to the hospital right away was very critical for me because it could have been a lot, lot worse if they hadn't got me there right away. So now we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms of stroke. We use a little algorithm that we call FAST to make it really easy to remember some of the key symptoms that we want you to look for. So if you find a friend or a neighbor or a colleague that's suffering from symptoms that you might think are a stroke, I want you to apply these simple words. The first is FACE for FAST. So F, FACE. I want you to look for things like asymmetry, like one side of their face might be drooping. They might have the inability to handle their saliva. I want them to grimace and see if you see any differences in their facial features. And things like smiling or puffing out their cheeks are a good way to see if they can't do something. The next uh, letter that we're going to be working on is arms. So things I want you to do about the arms is I want you to see if they're able to lift their arms up or if they have any troubles once they're up causing them to droop. So if I lift my arm up and it doesn't come up, that would be a positive sign. If I lift it up, and then it starts to droop down before the 10 second mark, that's a positive sign. You can do the same thing with the legs about trying to lift them up or walk, or if you have any dizziness or uncoordinated activity, that would also be a worrisome feature. The next letter in FAST is S for speech. So back kind of when we were looking at that face, we want them to talk, and we want to see if they're having troubles with uh, not only their words, but how their words sound. So there's different types of stroke affect the brain differently. Some won't allow you to say words at all, so you won't be able to speak. Some will cause you to have slurred speech, so when I try to say something, it sounds very slurry and funny, almost like a drunk person, perhaps. 
And finally, there's certain strokes where they affect your brain where you're able to get words out clearly, but you can't say the right words. So I might want to say, this is my watch, and it will come out, this is a box. My brain is not able to process that information. And the last part of our algorithm that we talked about today is the T, and that stands for time. Time is very important, so I want you to not only note the onset of the time of the symptoms, like it started uh, at the weather when I was watching the news, but it's also important to get to the hospital quickly. So I want you to dial 911 and get them to the closest emergency department so we can help initiate treatment. In hindsight, as a family member, I really wish I would have paid a little bit more attention to the, the signs. So his left hand, you know, knowing that there was no movement, or his left foot, um, just that loss of you know, the fogginess that he kind of talked about now that he is explaining that, I, I remember that. But at the time, I just thought he was just being difficult, you know, and being sick and being whiny about it. I ignored that part and really should have just been kind of looking for a, a little bit more signs. Um, I was actually with him. We, we had gone over to visit his parents, and he and his dad had um, decided to go to Osted and test out some golf clubs. Um, you know, he'd been complaining of headaches earlier that week. But when he and his dad came back from Osted's, he was in obvious pretty, pretty bad pain, like to the point of, you know, he was sitting in a chair like this and complaining about the double vision. And the, the more we sat there, the worse he got. Um, and, and it was really his, at his mom and dad's encouragement, you know, they said, we really think you ought to take him over to the emergency room and see what's going on. The EMT was able to, I think he did an assessment and that's when they knew that person did, a, they laid you down on the ground and then checked his left foot and knew that it didn't respond and then he knew we had to get an ambulance there right away. The symptom was, it was told my left leg, I may have had a little bit of a headache but don't remember again because you just kind of ignore those. You take some aspirin, take some Tylenol and go on about your day. Um, my leg I think probably wasn't working appropriately all day long but again I ignored it. Unfortunately for my, my stroke left me with um, some paralysis and some uh, loss of dexterity in my left hand and fingers and my foot. Also, my vision in my eyes is just a little off because of the um, muscles in my eyes don't want to respond the way they normally would. I went in to talk to my dad and, and, um, and, and see what was going on. And, and um, as he was talking, I could notice some of his speech was slurred. Um, and so I had him, I had him smile at me. You know, it's kind of one of the things we look for in EMS. And, and I noticed that he had some right-sided um, deficit. He had some right-sided facial droop. And so my dad, being a retired farmer, um, likes to fix things himself. And so he didn't want to go to the hospital. And um, it, I really couldn't convince him very well to do it, so I just dialed 911 myself and requested the ambulance because it's 20 miles away to the closest hospital from where we were. Once I got there they uh, talked to me about the TPA shot to get that that is fairly critical to get that in a timely manner and I was there in a timely manner so I just asked the doctor would you take this shot and he said yeah or she said yes. You know I've, I've seen people as young as 16 and 17 have strokes or TIA symptoms uh, there's case reports of young children having strokes and, and having problems. I've seen a 104 year old who had a stroke. So there, the age gamut is very large. What that means is that if you're having something happening to you that isn't making sense, uh, then perhaps it needs to be checked out. Make sure not to ignore any symptoms of stroke. Be sure to get medical attention by um, calling 911 or having a family member check in, check you into the emergency room. Obviously pain was the precursor to all this, so that was probably my first clue I should have done more. Don't ignore the symptoms. Um, if you have something that seems abnormal to you, go in and seek medical attention. Um, I wonder if I would have gone in earlier, could they have done some thrombolytic or some clot buster stuff to allow that clot to have been dissolved and me not to have the deficit I have today. If you don't want to end up uh, with permanent disability from a stroke, your best chances of improvement is rapid transport to a hospital where if you meet criteria for certain medications, you will get them. 
and the data shows that if you get those medicines in a very timely fashion, meaning a max of four and a half hours, but really the best outcome within 90 minutes of symptom onset, you have a chance of recovery that's about 30% greater uh, than those that didn't get the drug. That means if you weren't moving the left side of your body and a 30% chance of moving it in the end, that's a big deal. Or if you weren't talking and now you can talk again, again, that's a big change uh, in your final outcomes. So does it work that well for everybody? No. And does everybody get the medicine just because they get there in a timely fashion? The answer is no. There's strict criteria to give the medicine as well. That's why it's very important to get to a local emergency department where we can make sure that you meet all the risk factors uh, and signs and symptoms that you're indeed having a stroke and then identifying whether or not you would be a candidate for some of the fancier medicines that are involved in stroke care. We can only do that if you get there quickly. I can tell you that the biggest reason that people don't get the medicine for stroke is they don't get there in time. Don't be afraid to ask for help and don't be afraid to say if something's wrong because if it ends up being nothing, great, more power to you. You've spent a little bit of money but you can never get a person back. So it's really important to get the care when something's going on. Well, looking back on that day, um, I'm really glad we listened to our heart, listened to our gut intuition that um, to call 911 because I think that you know if he would have if we would have listened to him um, probably would have taken a nap tried to sleep it off I think the results would have been much different and um, he wouldn't enjoy the independence and the freedom he has today because of the fast action we took.